Hello, sir. How are you? Good, good, good. How are you doing? Good, good, good. Very good. Fantastic. So, all set? Everything is looking good? Yes, yes, yes. Also. Fantastic. So, great. Uh, let me just kick start. Uh, very good evening, everyone. This is uh, Vijeta here, uh, part of Thai Bangalore. And today, of course, it's an ecosystem community event. I'm with uh, Achitosh. He's part of the INQ uh, innovation team. I take a director, innovation, looking at all the strategy, expansions, and other things, technology. You're an expert in that. Now, Ashitosh, today is a very different session that we have uh, put together, mm -hmm. which will be as much as about information, growth tools, secret sources. Mm -hmm. But we should also give a, get a very, very quick uh, recap of the previous sessions. You have done so many things around uh, growth, around sales, around technology. Mm -hmm. So would you like to talk about that very quickly, and then we kickstart today? Yes, sure. Uh, thank you, Vijeta. Thank you for hosting this. And then thank you, Jagat, for this uh, wonderful platform. Um, so we we have gone through a very good startup journey. Uh, we've talked about how we build fantastic teams, how you know sales channels work, uh, how to get the best out of marketing, how to talk about like product market fit. Uh, we went slightly separate also. We talked about some new technologies. We covered blockchain, uh, which drew a lot of interest, uh, you know, uh, most likely we'll see you know doing others as well and then you know we went back and then we talked about like how to do risk mitigation how to do how to avoid conflicts you know, things that don't people don't talk about and then somewhere down the line i mean uh, you know, we realized that uh, we have to also talk about like the tools that we use right so i mean uh, uh, we we all start with like excel and then you know we all mature down and then start using tools which are uh, slightly much, you know, uh, much more evolved, and uh, this is that session, right? So we'll we'll talk about some of those uh, tools today, right? Um, so I have a small presentation, but that presentation is only, you know, the links to the tools. I'll obviously paste the things here as well, and then you know, it's for people to uh, go through. Uh, but I will also show some of my like when I'm sharing my screen, uh, I'll show some of the things that I keep reading on on a day-to-day -day basis, and then how do I keep myself updated? So without further ado, I'll just start with the screen share. You can see my screen. Um, the first thing is uh, we talk about uh, tools. And uh, I mean, we, we, we keep talking about like, you know, how are the different ways um, we organize ourselves. And one of the things, uh, you know, Asana has been a big part of uh, our journey, my journey personally. Uh, I've been using Asana since, uh, you know, uh, 2013. And uh, it, it was something of a very good, you know, tool to use. Uh, but eventually, you know, somewhere down the line, we, we realized that uh, there are other tools as well. And one of them is called uh, Redmine. Um, so it's an open source tool. It can be installed on your own server. So this is just how, you know, Redmine looks like and the things that it provides. So it provides a lot of things uh, outside of what Asana does. So Asana is purely about like project management. Uh, here you can you can go beyond that, right? So you can create issue tracking system. Uh, you can, you know, track like project timelines and you can do Gantt charts and other things. You can also, if you have like, you know, um, uh, freelance workers on your, uh, on, on your payroll, then you can do time tracking for them and then it has integrations to Git and Bitbucket and other things. So it has like a lot of things. And then one thing that it also has interestingly is the, the Microsoft integration, so Microsoft Exchange integration. So all those features comes in and uh, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful tool, something that can be you know, installed immediately on your system. Uh, so uh, this, is, this has been something that we have, in, you know, we have used for almost, uh, uh, almost three years now. And, uh, Works very well for us, right? So this is like how issue tracking looks like in activities. If you want to create some and then other things, so not just you know a simpler project management tool, but like you know evolve. And uh, Crystal Nose is something that we have talked about in the past. It's it's a it's a Myers Briggs and some other uh, you know psychology related parameters it uses to match to people. Uh, you can install uh, the the tool here. So this is my Crystal Nose. And uh, out of it right now. Okay. Uh, so basically, if you're on LinkedIn and you want to, you know, make a connection to someone, uh, 
uh, you can use crystal nose to you know uh, see how your compatibility is for that person and uh, it will match that person according to your compatibility and try to get uh, you know the most out of it right uh, so oops i don't think you can see that but let's say you know if i search my friend jagat uh, so So if I, you know, if I log in over here, then it will show me my matching personality with this, and uh, we can do we can do a lot of things, you know, in terms of like how sales has to be done. Uh, how are we supposed to, you know, if we have to have a talk, what is like what what Jagat likes, and you know, what are the things that Jagat would be more interested in, then you know, we, we take that conversation further. Uh, so that that's a very fantastic tool. Uh, this is something that I have been using almost for seven years now. So it's called Beancom. Uh, it has gone through several iterations. It's an open source accounting tool, and a uh, um, big part of our journey, right? So I mean, you know, all of us we start with Excel. Uh, we we put our uh, you know balances and everything, right? So, but then eventually, you know, you have to go to a CA. You have to talk to a CA, right? Uh, so bean count helps that journey. Right? So when you're going to a CA and you want to do all your details to a CA uh, for the accounting purposes, you know everything is in one place. It integrates with a lot of uh, things, and uh, it it just works very well. Right? So this this has been you know uh, something that we have been using and uh, works for me, uh, especially in my case. I manage two companies plus my personal accounts, so all of that separately I can maintain, and then you know I'm maintaining that. Uh, three different bank accounts, three different accounts. So Bean Count does that for me. Uh, on those lines, also we have something called Finmark. I believe I have that open. Finmark is a startup, right? It's a, it's a relatively new startup uh, which has come into the space. Uh, it's a, it's a beautiful layout. So this is this is how Finmark looks like. Um, they they do give like you know uh, two weeks of uh, uh, trial period and then you can use it. I'm a paid customer. I do like to pay them, so you know this. This is how like uh, you can you can put employees, you can put their money, you can put you know expenses, everything you can do. And what they do differently is uh, they do forecasting. So based on whatever you have input, uh, they'll do a forecast on what what looks like the near near future scenario. And then they also do probability analysis on those scenarios. So if you can say that, let's say you know. Uh, we, we know COVID is there, and then for the next three months uh, we're not going to travel. So that's a stress scenario in which we are. Uh, it's hampering our job. So you can put that as a scenario, and then you can uh, input that as a text, and then you know it will it will help you uh, send that data out, and then you can do a projection based on how much money you have been lost and stuff like that. So it's a very good tool, very niche tool, uh, works very well for us, and and of course. Uh, from a code management perspective, we use uh, Bitbucket. So that entire tool chain is what we use uh, for you know, continuous integration, uh, for code reviews, Jira, and all that. So all that sits in the Bitbucket uh, framework. The reason I use this uh, uh, outside of you know like GitHub and GitLab and other things is uh, Bitbucket, Bitbucket provides uh, multiple uh, private repositories. As compared to GitHub and GitLab, so uh, if you are maintaining, like in our case, we maintain multiple project repositories. So uh, hardware is separate, software is separate, within software also, um, based on you know client requirements, we have some restrictions. So all of that sits separately, and then you know all of that sits in the bucket and virtual private repositories. So so we do it that way. So this is what we use. Uh, in terms of tooling, I think. Uh, uh, Unknown tools is only the set, you know. Uh, other things, I think most of it, uh, it's, it's more or less the same. Uh, but uh, apart from Excel, you know, this uh, this this is a cool sheet of mine that I always go back to. This is something that I've been I rely I've been relying on it for almost uh, three to four years. Uh, these are the blogs that I read. Uh, my blogs uh, mostly. Uh, Go from anywhere between, uh, you know, tech to non-tech. I don't care. I mean, I, I read, read about food. I read about photography. I read about sketching. Uh, it doesn't matter. You know, it it just has to be something that I read over. Uh, but these are the things that uh, I um, 
I've subscribed to. I get these newsletters from time to time. Uh, Strategy is mostly about like market analysis. Uh, if you if you have not used Strategy before, I would you know strongly suggest that we you know you you look at that. Um, they they do a lot of analysis. Uh, they it's not just tech related. It it does a lot of other things as well. And uh, it talks about like uh, you know if if let's say this whole uh, GameStop thing which is happening in US right now. So they did an analysis of that, and then they talked about like how that analysis works and how that stock is working. Um, a coiler is uh, also on the similar lines, but it's a little more uh, you know tech centric. So I use that. Um, all these, most of these are like tech, uh, you know, tech around tech. Uh, Rachel, by the way, is another very good blog. It's um, by a lady named Rachel, and she writes very well. She explains concepts very well. So if you are in a pickle and then you want to read about something, uh, this is something that I go to. Uh, most of my reading is usually around people who who explain things uh, a little more detailed and a little more like I'm a five year old. <laughs> um, and that's just like a personal peeve of mine when you know people talk about like blogs, especially machine learning, blockchain. Um, they just go into concepts that are so hard to follow. So a lot of my, you know, uh, reading comes from people who who break it down into something which is very easy to follow, very easy to read, very easy, easy to understand, and that's where I go back to uh, these people because uh, their uh, uh, way of teaching, their way of uh, talking about things is something that I understand very well, and I, I've always stuck to them, and then they've always been helpful. Um, apart from this. Uh, in my daily readings, uh, so th I, I use an app called Flipboard. Um, I'll just show a very brief view of how Flipboard looks like. Um, so my screen, I hope everyone can see my screen. So basically, this this app, uh, what it does is it, uh, uh, like many other apps, uh, it consolidates all my readings, it all my habits, and then it starts to get things. Uh, but uh, I can also pin information that you know I want to read on a daily basis. Uh, y Combinator is one, and then Harvard Business Review is the other one that I constantly read. Um, I go to Reddit a lot, but instead of you know going to uh, the main repositories of Reddit, I have a very specific uh, skill sets that I look at. Uh, some are tech related, some are investment related. Uh, I don't read much around startup. Uh, it, it's mostly around like how data is captured, uh, you know, learnings of a new day, you know, which is which is which is like just general learning. Uh, other than that, I do follow a lot of other things uh, like green living. Uh, so it's it's mostly around like how uh, to live natural ways, you know, uh, eco-friendly and all that. So uh, it's it's a very interesting uh, website. Uh, Nature.com is the one that I usually go to. Uh, so there, I'm mostly talking, you know, looking at what are the new technologies that are helping us go more green, save the environment, save the planet. Um, design is also one big part of uh, our journey, um, and I'm not talking about just, you know, purely from a perspective of like software design. We work in hardware as well, and we work for uh, we we work in a field where uh, we just don't have to think from a, a nice T point. It's, it's not like, you know, it has to look nice. Uh, it, the functionality depends on a lot, right? So we, we go into factories, we're installing stuff in factories. So the design is not something that's just purely from a perspective of aesthetics. It's, it's also from the perspective of usability and operability. So looking at all that, so we keep the design uh, in focus. Uh, other than that, you know, I read on feed, food, and dining and other things as well. Um, I would just uh, uh, beyond this, I would like to you know show some of the things that I've been uh, uh, keeping a track of uh, in a general basis. Um, but before that, uh, you know, if there are any questions, uh, more than happy to answer them. Yeah, this is good. This is good. Uh, very good, in fact, and very useful as well. Ashutosh, and also uh, see, it's a continuous learning, right? Yes. So I think one of some of the things uh, that I wanted to dig up over the next uh, forty-five minutes, yes. also the books that you read, yes. and also some of the non-technical uh, blogs. I know that a lot of your stuff that you're reading 
-hmm. is towards uh, technology. Mm -hmm. But supposing you have to learn about say growth tools, or you want to learn say about you want to expand into Singapore, you want to expand uh, into Australia or something like that. Mm -hmm. What are some of those things also that you can look at? Okay, if that also sure. makes sense. Sure. sure. All right. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Please continue. Please continue. Okay. All right. So I mean, I, I'll talk a little bit about books. Uh, the books that I yeah. go back to all the time. So this is one book, and you can see the state of this book as well. That you know, I, I've gone back to it. Uh, I don't know how many times. So Outliers is one book uh, that I've, I've read uh, multiple times. Um, this is a very interesting book. It's called How to. Uh, it's uh, none of the real world solutions, but it's it's a guy called uh, Randall Munro. He runs a website called XKCD, and then you know somebody asked him if I have to jump so high enough that I can reach the moon, how will it happen? So he takes a very scientific approach to solve that problem, and then it's a very funny book. Uh, I would advise some you know people to buy it. It's, it's what's the uh, website, uh, Ashutosh? Sorry, X the website XKCD. Okay, so yes, type it out. Yes, you know. Sorry, yes, yeah, 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 take your time, take your time. Continue, continue. Yeah. Please. Interesting so, stuff. Yeah, so uh, XKCD has been something that, uh, like like how we read Dilbert and Calvin and Hobbes, XKCD is something that I read all the time. Uh, so so that's the guy, Randall Munro, and he, he takes a very scientific approach to things, even to stupid questions. So, <laughs> so I, I found it very interesting. Uh, this book is my all-time favorite book. I, I have talked about it in the group as well. It was from the chairman. It's from the chairman of uh, uh, Bear Stearns. And it, this book is uh, so beloved to me that I got it bounded. So this is like hardbound, right? So this this literally has like uh, letters. So you can see that this like one page letters. And every time, I mean, you if you read them, right? So it's like, you know, uh, it, it talks about, uh, you know, Today we did so well in the market, and I'm very thankful to all the people who did this. So he sent it out to all the stands and players. So things like that. So it helps you, you know, understand and love not just what you're doing, but also the people that you're working with, which is equally very important. And uh, so that's something that I always took it from that, and uh, you know, I've, I've read it many times. Um, this is another one. I think you know, uh, it, it, it has gone through my hands multiple times. I love to read this book. Uh, so it has gone. And uh, one of the very interesting books that I read, um, unfortunately, I read it very recently, is uh, Wealth of Nations. It's about uh, the building of in uh, US, uh, how the you know the markets work in the US, and then how the capitalist market and all that work. So it's it's something uh, uh, you know I've, I've read multiple times uh, recently. So it's a good book. Yeah, and I get back to it. And uh, I'd love you to also share some books. Right? Yeah, yeah, one by one, <laughs> one, one by one. Okay. So showing this. Oh, Stephen very Kobe. nice. Yes, yes. Okay. yes. Yeah. Then, then this one. Yes, built to last. Oh, built to last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is a good concept. Eat that frog. Yes, 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 yes. Like okay. You know, get things done. This is an interesting book. This is for non-technical people. Creative uh, confidence. Yeah. Uh -huh. Basically, it says that you know, like this is from the IDO people, right? Design uh -huh. thinking and all that. Yeah. So they say very clearly that you know, you, you just keep thinking of throwing, doing something that you can create. You right. don't have to be a technology or design person, whatever. Right. This is a very interesting book which my friend Shivi had given to me to read. Okay. And she had to, had to read it and give it back. Of course, about Scrum. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. So you talk about you know to do list and this and that. So this is about a Scrum thing. You know these guys were the original guys about Scrum. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. How to iterate. How to build. You no. Know, of course, this is a. I mean, this is a highly recommended hard things. Yeah. Perfect. Hard things. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is something that I'm still trying to understand better. Deep work. Deep you know, work. Without getting distracted. Uh -huh. Okay. Multitasking. Trying to do too many things. Uh -huh. And I will show more books, man. I've got I've got some more books, but a little bit later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Ashutosh, uh, it's now 5:20. All right. <laughs> So 20 minutes into the game, we are also going to have Jagat coming in talking about video tools and video CRM virtual office at 540. Yeah. So I'm just letting the audience also know. Mm -hmm. But uh, see, it's like it's see, I, I don't know. This is a situation that uh, many people talk to me, you know, in terms of and our audience are early stage startups, building MVPs, building prototypes. Mm -hmm. Sales is important. Yes. Right. And it's all easy to say that I've got a techniques and flywheel engagement and HubSpot mm -hmm. and Salesforce and uh, Panel and I've got the best looking templates and emails, but the frustration, the yeah. toughness, yeah. and when do you stop trying to sell and back out? Mm -hmm. Okay, how do you know? 
<laughs> you was you do sales also right i know that yes. you work with so you work with a lot of top people and i'm sure you're trying to get many many more customers and not able to manage also okay yes. if you going to give me examples was is candid mm-hmm. but at the same time you have to maintain protocol <laughs> but when did you know that you know take a break and move on and concentrate on other things or find other ways or whatever it is uh, you want to talk about that little bit sure so my my bottom line is usually uh, uh, when, when the cost of uh, you know trying to sell something it, it, it has become more than you know uh, what i can afford uh, in in a in a very simplistic way let's say you know i put one sales guy or i'm if i'm doing the work right and we are trying to crack a deal for almost 3 months and uh, it's it's going on in meetings and meetings so that means you know in 3 months if it's my time or somebody else's time i wasted that much money or that much effort right so so then i take a call and then i you know i, I we make that hard choice that maybe it's time to you know get get this deal off and uh, this happened very recently uh, with a client a uh, bangalore based client a big client and uh, we did a demo we installed the things we went there and every time uh, the amount of effort we had to put in was much more than the kind of output we were seeing back so we just had to tell them that you know we know so my my basic rule is that if you are putting an x amount of effort and your output is not even x by 2 then you know you're losing the game and so that that's my you know like a basic rule of thumb um, it has happened with multiple companies not just this right and and you have to take that hard hard step right uh, uh, when when we did that when we are starting the company it was harder uh, but given the space that we are in uh, industrial iot is is like that you know everyone wants to Uh, scrunch that money as much as possible so but you have to make that hard call right because uh, somebody who's who's chasing that deal uh, maybe they, you know they have to travel they have to do this and uh, there's like uh, time wasted and money wasted so we we make that call and then we say that uh, you know better to go behind someone who would be uh, more ready to pay. so uh, so that's the you know the hard part of uh, whether we want to do this or we don't want to do this but in terms of like you know who we approach uh, our thesis has been more and more around people that we know are talking about money in the second or the third quarter that's like the bottom line if people are ready to talk about like you know what is the what is the cost of taking your equipment and then you send them the cost and then they're still wanting to continue the discussion then we say that you know this is this is something that we want to take uh but if people are still you know dangling around that then we just cut the um, interesting yeah yeah it is a tough one right but sometimes you got to conserve your energy if nothing else yeah exactly so the 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 theory behind that is that if you're putting x amount of effort and you're not getting x by 2 return uh, just walk away okay do you write blogs do you think it is important to maintain a daily journal a to do list i do maintain a journal uh, not a blog i'm still a very pen and paper guy <laughs> okay so my, i mean i fill uh, at least one diary a week kind of guy and uh, and the reason behind that is that uh, i talk to myself a lot <laughs> so you you'd see a lot of scribbling if you find some of my notes you'd think like i've run away from a mental hospital most likely because you know i i talk to myself a lot and then i'd write down sometimes like like you and i are talking right so i i'd not put down like bullet points uh, initially i'll put down the bullet points and then i'll make it conversational the, the flow in which it happened because then it helps me you know keep that map that uh, like you know just before this meeting we had a call right so i immediately went down and i wrote that down that uh, this is what we talked about and the flow and yeah. conversation yeah, so it yeah. helps me remember that so that's why I'm not in blog because it it it's more around like you know pen and paper so i use okay perfect see now ashutosh one more thing irrespective whether it's about technology or any topic mm-hmm. they say that to have curiosity and to have that learning curve you know constantly moving forward yes. what are the techniques around that because it's very important to stay current so mm-hmm. how does one go about it uh, you have to dedicate 2 hours a day and, okay uh, not continuous 2 hours uh, so the way i do it is uh, i keep first hour like morning one hour uh, for um, 
you know reading about technology i dedicate that time to technology don't don't read about anything else and then i focus purely on technology and reading stuff on technology and then my second half like after i've come back home you know i spent some time relaxed at home i spent one hour you know reading about other things except news i i stay away from news as much as possible because the news you get somehow or the other you get that information so i i keep the keep it that way so two hours every day at the very least uh, you know it, it's it's a habit right so we have to we have to form that habit we have to talk about like you know that and sure yeah and uh, one thing that i have done is from my feed um, because i was in us and then india so my feed was very you know like uh, political from both angles so one thing that i have done is i kept the politics aside um, and you know I, i i read mostly about and and i'm just going to you know very quickly show the screen again in this uh, uh, this is flipboard so you can see the topics that i read on so they are like all over the place there's like design there's there's about like movies and stuff and then you know it goes on and then cars everything so i keep it that way so you know not nothing very specific uh, and then you know uh, just read on it the one thing that i i like to follow i, I usually I go out to work walk in the morning so if i'm walking i i put on like a podcast i would listen to a podcast and uh, then that helps and uh, something that uh, someone very recently told me was and i tried that it works very well is uh, to listen to audio books while you're walking or while you're running and uh, that works actually so like there are books that you know i was having a hard time to read so i started downloading the audio books and that that generally this works very well okay so, fantastic so i also you know i think uh, tim ferris is one more person that who does very good uh, podcasts yes yes uh, tim ferris is very good also definitely the ted talk some of the you can choose which topic you want to learn about yes, so, yes. Ted, yeah ted talks gives you a lot of uh, thing Uh, yeah. one more thing that i would also recommend is you know bill gates keeps talking about books he reads a lot he's a voracious reader yes so yes, every yes. every few months he'll recommend a couple of books and usually yes. it, it yes. and this could be anything uh, abstract it could be about history or it could be about uh, whatever you know he, he creates a lot of lists and he sends out to correct. people correct yeah. and on your smartphone i think so what i also do is i have a kindle uh um, mm-hmm. i don't use it very smartly i read a lot of junk also on it and it's uh, mm-hmm. but 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 anyway that's areas of interest but also what i do is i download a few chapters uh, you know i should watch of uh, books around innovation books on mm-hmm. sales uh, you know anything about lot of lot of classics are there about uh, for, on so many subjects so even if i can get a few chapters the first few chapters the introduction yes. and what's the book uh, uh, all about then i will talk about that yeah okay uh, and it helps it helps a lot right and see many times you got to refresh yourself no because i mean actually yeah. one more thing that i say is by rereading the same thing which is of really good quality mm-hmm. the second or third time is when you don't you know it, it stays in your head forever it stays for a long time yes, yes. okay and so i was also asking you know what are the uh, okay audio books you talked about podcasts we talked about we talked about blogs and what are the how to learn how to understand better how to listen better i think those things also we have to be a little bit uh, you know what are your thoughts around that is there are there some techniques that you come across like you know how do you understand better how do you retain uh, better rather so uh, in terms of like you know uh, when i am in especially in meetings and stuff um, i always carry a notebook always so you know that that's one way of uh, me retaining you know uh, the meeting and the notes i keep that in mind <clears throat> but even in terms of like personal uh, you know discussions like i i have a pen and paper right now with me so, so you know i i keep this with me and then i talk about like what what we are talking about and how do we get back to the questions and then you know how um but in general my philosophy has always been to never cut the person off in front of me sometimes it backfires but most of the time it works for me so i mean i i give that person enough space to listen and uh, for my mind to not deviate i keep like pointers either mental pointers or like you know other pointers to to do that okay. so so yeah that that's my philosophy so i always keep an out shot of somebody so okay great as much as possible perfect perfect uh, in in terms of like the podcast i i mentioned three of them that i use uh, very religiously so money for the rest of us 
stacking benjamins and uh, we study i said i have written we study benjamins we study billionaires so so that's a very good podcast that i you know uh, go back to uh, but uh, you're right like you know uh, it, it's all it's also important to go back to soft skills as much as you know we talk about like tech skills and other things and uh, it um, it's it's not just you know about listening it's also about like how you sit and how you create that persona right so especially when we are when we are going to client visits right and then uh, most of the time the client's not going to speak first right so how do you start that initial conversation how do you you know you, you go by you go after the pleasantries you finish the pleasantries what's the next step right how do you how do you start that conversation right so so uh, that is also a very important skill Uh, and that that's something that startup owners you know need to know right uh, because uh, for b2c owners you know everyone is a customer right so whoever you are talking to you are trying to sell your product to without being you know very uh, upfront about it so so how do you present yourself how do you talk about that that persona matters a lot right and uh, i mean i i still remember i was uh, in a flight uh, was going from boston to houston and uh, you know there was a person sitting in front of me and this is way back in 2008 when startup culture was still there so he saw me read uh, i you know something on my phone and uh, he immediately t- started talking about like you know programming languages reviewing rails and stuff and then he said he's been coding on something and so that's a very good way to talk about like you know the product and then he started getting into the product and stuff so um, how you present yourself in such a scenario how you present yourself in that situation is also a very good skill and uh, something that you know we should we should learn and we should do how to do that it's it's not just about you know like numbers and presentations and sometimes it's also about you know take things for the interesting so also you know for those who are watching you all should also look on youtube uh, stanford and uh, stanford school and also harvard mm-hmm. and a few other people like insiad okay mm-hmm. they also have some very nice uh, leadership talks yes okay? so that is also pretty nice actually okay it's on diverse topics okay mm-hmm. it's not like you remember it's for students yes. it's not meant for you know trying to show off to the world and i know so much but it is meant for graduate students undergraduate students also mm-hmm. i definitely also go through a lot of uh, websites indian websites i try to see what um, you know economic times your story in 42 mm-hmm. that also gives you a lot of wealth of story Yes. of course from thai bangalore we are publishing articles all over the place mm-hmm. and uh, we have just published a series uh, about you know ip we published uh, articles around uh, from you know from a some subject matter expert from hauser electronics mm-hmm. about space tech and other things right what are the technology tools what are the future for it mm-hmm. uh, we have also talked about many things many many topics i mean pretty interesting uh, mm-hmm. stuff but you know you got to take that uh, habit to read medium.com yes. has got so many topics that you can easily search for isn't it yes, on yes. Uh, if you want to right i don't do so much of reddit because sometimes mm-hmm. a lot of other stuff comes out but I, i kind of you know and i also like uh, slightly different uh, articles that the ken comes out with yes okay. yeah that's that's also nice mm-hmm. okay i did talk about uh, mckinsey so mm-hmm. a lot of nice reports at kpmg mckinsey grand thought read a lot of reports i think ashutosh yes there's so many beautifully researched reports mm-hmm. that gives you and okay it is a little bit old information because the uh, research starts and it gets time to validate and then get published so there it, it could be 6 months old or whatever it is but it's still very useful i think there's some beautiful reports that have come out about ecosystems and startups and innovations and how israel is doing things so how is singapore doing things so can we add it to india Mm-hmm. can we build bridges across so i think some of these thought you know it triggers your mind to think mm-hmm. about uh, what's possible yeah and and why should we not think about that right it's one life we got to do something amazing with it okay. uh, and, now and to add to that case studies uh, you know case studies like, uh, yeah case so studies, case studies uh, case studies who do you kind of where do you kind of recommend uh, as such achutosh where is the best way to uh, get it uh, so harvard uh, is my go to place where i go for case studies because their case studies are <clears throat> not you know if you go to hbr it's not limited to one area so it, it can uh-huh. be anywhere between economics all the way to you know like uh, social sciences and the cover everything yeah. so that that's my you know go to place for case studies but even for like our own case studies so for instance you know i'm talking about cyber security mm-hmm. in the industry so i look at you know who are the key leaders and then you go to their websites and then they'll have like fantastic case studies on like how they mitigated the problem what was mm-hmm. the problem so <clears throat> so i you know follow those case studies as well so that does two things right it tells you a little bit more about your competitors and it also tells you, you know like how 
how well you know they they solve the certain problems and how they well, mm. how well they defend the kind of problem so so i do that as well perfect also you know like okay look not everything is for free but many times you have some uh, limited time uh, opening up from say new yorker or washington post or mm -hmm. time magazine economist mm -hmm. harvard uh, harvard business review so try to read as much as possible because this will give you so much and also i think uh, ashutosh the pointer here is not just for startups but also someone is thinking about starting up or someone who works for a startup you have to become mm -hmm. a subject matter expert mm -hmm. on your subjects mm -hmm. right and the only way you can do that of course i very very strongly recommend that please look at all the resources that are being made available by nascom by tai by fiki even inku has been doing a few events yes. uh, especially there's something coming up on women entrepreneur programs there are a lot of startup showcases where innovation and people are talking about mm -hmm. so i think uh, we should not miss all that right ashutosh but how do you make time 24 hours so if you want to but you have to keep some time out i see very interesting ashutosh i must share this with the audience as well Mm -hmm. uh, so yesterday you know i was at a event where navin tiwari in mobi mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so he was you know you know right i mean in mobi and glance and uh, so many other products that they have built and they also had a tough time during the pandemic the first yes, few yes. months was uh, the everyone just stopped i mean look airlines hotels travel business everything boom zero <laughs> and then they they okay then they said okay we have we still got to figure things out so they did a lot of research work mm -hmm. and which are the like fintech is still hot and uh, you know whatever so you know anyone who works on the remote work and fintech and whatever they'll still need to use uh, mobile advertising and they will still want to use lock screen technology to uh, you know engage with audiences mm -hmm. so they figured out the industries they reached out to more people they have reached out to their mentors so there are problems but we have to pivot when required and we have to figure yeah. out the solutions isn't it yeah and 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 that's the ever growing thing right i mean um, research adapt research adapt research adapt right? so no matter what we do uh, no matter what we do you know it's always uh, it will always boil down to that right so you know we we've, we've talked about it in multiple sessions you've asked me this question multiple times like how do we keep updated and the the answer is always going to be the same that uh, we have to research we have to adapt right um when we were when we were entering the pandemic uh we had uh, for a client we had ordered uh, you know 300 numbers of devices from china and okay. then towards the pandemic first the pandemic hit and then something else hit and then something else right so we never got that right and then you know you have to adapt you have to you know do the research how do you get that how do you you know make sure that you can you know get this correct right okay. um, yeah. it's a, it's a person who has paid to you right so you you have to do that research all the time you, you yeah know, we we never went into that mode that it's a force majeure that you know we we have to we have some time to get out of it you got that time to think and research and then <laughs> like, interesting interesting yeah yeah life is what teaches us many tough question yeah. lessons and ask us a lot of questions also right yes, yes, <laughs> what you going to do what you going to do so anyway, we have jagat now thank you jagat for joining in and of yes. course your beautiful platform is so useful for all of us for the community mm -hmm. and for your customers as well mm -hmm. uh, so jagat we just stay very focused today what we want to do is it's about tools resources growth hacks and obviously video is hot sales is hot video crms etc so this is a learning session yes you may you, of course you have to talk about vidphone and why it's so useful for everyone but what can vidphone do for us i think that's what we are very very eager to learn from you and share with the audience okay and ashutosh you can ask him questions as well on this okay it's interactive all right yeah perfect yeah so jagat over to you man you're on mute buddy you're on mute Yeah, the standard dialogue of uh, no, no, no. all webinars can you hear me <laughs> you made it right there so it's right in my face and it's not overlay i should put red color no, it, <laughs> please please no it's a pleasure i think it's all you know good ashutosh i think you know, 11 sessions i think the kind of stuff that i have learned also is phenomenal to be honest with you you know this uh, very honestly it doesn't matter to me you know we should get more audience yes it's something that i'm always working on but what we are learning i think we, we we decided we're going to do this till we all learn it from each other mm -hmm. and that's something that i think uh, yeah every every session i am learning so much now yeah. and that's that's the most important thing right like as as a founder you have to be open to learning i think that's the fundamental thing absolutely today i was off some really good calls you know uh, and just to share with you remote work some people send me zoom links so very first i i politely tell them uh, it would be nice if you could you know <laughs> <laughs>
because uh, I really don't have it downloaded. I have a download, so it, it will be a problem and all that. So it, it's nice. It starts from there. But yes, I think the past 10, 11 sessions with Ashutosh, you've been so enlightening. And you're covering so many aspects of the startup story. Before I get to Bitphone, I think we're always pitching. That's like, I'm, I'm doing that my fifth pitch today. But it's not about Bitphone, right? It's, it's really about how each entrepreneur or each founder is able to pursue his journey. I think that's really, to me, very important today. Because, uh, you know, coming to think of it, it's no more about conferencing or webinars. You, you look at our platform today, you know, there is no difference between us and Zoom uh, or any other platform in terms of the experience. Uh, but what, what is the experience we are really fighting for? Right? It's really about remote work, remote business. As an entrepreneur today, can I click a link and become an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. That's today our vision. Uh, it's always tough for us. You know, and I ask myself if I had a place where I could just click a button and become an entrepreneur. You know, <laughs> I would do that today. That's the real problem. And I'm talking today also, I finished a couple of calls with some very, very you know, uh, high quality entrepreneurs doing some fantastic work. And the problem is the same. Today they are saying, okay, you know, video technology, you know, we want to get under the hood. We want to see what it's about. And I was telling Akhil also, like, we have run the company like an R&D lab. I'm not running <laughs> it so far. You know? Because I think, like, just when I see my kid growing up, you can't expect a kid who is one or five years old to, to you know, go and do revenue. You have to play. Yeah. So the aspect, one of the biggest tools that I think has, is kind of important is to play. And sometimes, you know, when you get caught up raising money and MRR and all of this stuff, like, you cannot play. You have to play. If you look at all the projects, all the great companies, these are all just, you know, pastimes, full-time pastimes. And uh, Apple, you look at Apple, you look at Google, look at Facebook, any company that you want. These really started off as pastimes. The moment there is pressure on you to say that, hey, this is a business, you got to monetize, you got to do this, that, you lose the whole flavor. And that's a tough thing for every founder, I think, now to battle, uh, especially in such a capitalistic world. And it's a good thing to be capitalistic. It's not about that. But to really build innovation, to build R&D, you have to be, you know, you, you probably have to think beyond revenue. You have to think, okay, I'm going to just put half a decade into this. I don't know what it's, what's going to be the outcome, but we just love doing it every day. And we work, I think, Vijay Tanu is, I mean, we're working 24-7. Sometimes I just tell him, like, you know, I, I just, I'm not on the phone, right? I'm just going to sleep for like 18 hours. Because I've not slept the whole week, probably. So sometimes you have to play so hard and enjoy what we do. So I think that's that tool. You know, my view is like the tool is like you know games to play with technology as, as a startup founder. And today we find a lot of experienced founders, like because the whole thesis comes from MRR and what's your revenue and everything. That sales and marketing is always given a lot of focus. We lose, uh, you know, what's the beauty of R and D or technology itself as, as just an end game. Just to build product is the end game, right? It's not about selling it. Yes, you can like to sell it. You can monetize it. I'm sure a lot of smart people who can put together business models. But to just build on the tech, and that that's the beauty of it. So sometimes I think the tool really is games, right? You have to play. And Google also, if you see a lot of their products come through their 20% time, 80-20. It's not unintentional. It's, it's a game plan. And Gmail, a lot of their products, you know, Docs probably, and many of them came through their, you know, twenty percent time. So it's tough. It's tough to play technology, but I think that's like a very important tool as well. So with with phone, yeah, happy to just bump in, you know, this like because we launched something yesterday, and I'm like really gungo about this. Uh, it's like you know, I hope my screen's visible, can full screen, and you know, the, the beauty is, is like it's about beautiful remote work. It's not just about work anymore. Like, it's about the virtual office for beautiful remote work. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ashutosh, I'll just like kind of just, you know, probably two, three minutes, I'll run through very quickly. Mm -hmm. and happy to take all the feedback and kind of build better. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're all living the remote economy and, you know, the remote customer experience is the main thing, right? All of us are entrepreneurs, even more than, you know, getting funding. I think the focus all of us want is customers, right? Customer experience. Do they love what we, what we have? I think today, when you look at it, the remote customer experience is broken. Like I think a lot of businesses today are facing sales and marketing challenges. That's because really, you know, a customer cannot connect with you on video. The moment they connect with you on video, the deal is 50% done. Let me tell you, you know, because sales is trust. So unlike other customer experience channels like email or phone or website, there is a unique destination. 
you have no destination today, uh, you know, as a, as a remote entrepreneur. We realized the secret sauce, you know, we, we were last year in this whole, you know, midst of a massive battle, you know, in the conferencing and meeting space and got us to think really what is remote work and actually business happens in serendipity, right? Like sometimes your good chance meetings, you meet someone at the coffee, uh, coffee vending machine or meet someone you know, at the chai shop. It's what we call no schedule meetings. And this is how business actually happens. Now to have this, to make this happen, what we realized is that ubiquity is critical. It's like there has to be a permanent destination or, or some place that's always on, that's always there, right? Like your coffee shop, like your office, like your phone number, email. So we said that should be done with video. And so that's what we call the video ID. Right? It's like, much like a email address or a phone number. So what we say is like for remote work to work, we have to go beyond scheduled meetings, you know, and, and downloading applications. So it's really virtual office for remote sales, remote marketing. How can the how can today the entrepreneur really work? You know, in this new kind of template that we have. So it's all about remote sales, remote marketing, remote support, remote collaboration, the whole piece into one elegant platform. Like everything is pre-integrated. Right. Just to give you an example, this is like what we call the virtual office for a customer. Anybody can come in, they can, you know, see the live webinars, they can book an appointment with the business, they can, you know, video chat with the business. The customer customer touch point. You know, first time in the world you have a unique URL, like, you know, bitphone.me slash bitphone or INQ or, you know, Ashutosh or Vijeta, where people can just directly video and, you know, do business with you. This is like very, very important. Uh, this was the biggest missing link that I found, like, you know, in, in the whole video space. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we have all the sequential video tools to advance the customer generation journey. You know, first you reach out to webinars, they become your leads. You have Vmail, which is a revolutionary product that we have, you know, asynchronous video conversations. Then you have video appointments where you can, you know, talk and close the deal. Of course, you have a lot of flavors you can provide, right? It's really about your room, your negotiation, your business. So you can really customize the look and feel to look like your business, like your office. This is the most amazing thing, right? There's the internal office space, like just like your office. You have everyone sitting there. So remote work has always been associated with loneliness. And my, my thing also, like our battle also has been about loneliness. So we say like, now everyone's available in a screen. You know? It is like work, the, the most magical customer acquisition funnel, right? The video based, you have your virtual office, drive people, lead capture, nurture them and then convert them into, you know, big dollars. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's really how you look at it. Three main sectors, any startup, any SMB today that wants to do remote business, you know, talk to us. Enterprises, we have Citron, we have some other large companies talking to uh, educational healthcare. There is no, you know, shortage of this. We have to provide video first learning, video first healthcare. These are like basics for, you know, an India tomorrow. So that's what we say. So, with phone, brand new release, you know, a lot of work gone in, and uh, hopefully people like it. That's how it is. <laughs> so, I have a question. Yes. And, uh, it's a question to both of you. Uh, is, uh, we, we talk about tools in general, right? What is the tool to get to get and stay motivated? Get and stay? Motivated. Yoga. <laughs> okay. I think meditation. And this guy right here, you know, Ramakrishna probably is you know, you have to be, I think, at some level. In fact, yeah, the, the, the story is that in twenty six yeah, absolutely, Paramsa Yogananda. Mm -hmm. You should watch Mark Benioff talk about this. Have you seen that? Yes, yes, I know. That's unbelievable. Right? When you look at to the level that Steve Jobs has gone, and see, it's not only about that. I think to me, to me, you know, I've done this ten years, mm -hmm. and uh, easy last year that I could have given up, like too hard, like it's impossible. Like, my investors kind of thinking twice. All investors, we're talking to everybody in India and outside. Uh, everyone's got their own views. But what keeps us motivated, I think, is is the fact that why we do this. That that's the most important. It's not about why somebody else thinks our business is cool or not cool. Uh, do I believe that people need a better life, that entrepreneurs need a better platform to, to connect with customers, talk to teach? Till that's there, we should build it. And uh, that's very important. I think the, the simple answer to stay motivated is, you know, you have to look within as an entrepreneur. And I always say, like, you know, employees, I mean, all due respect to employees, but I always say, you know, I where did I go to school? It's not because I want to learn something. It's because my parents paid fees. Or why, do I, why did I go to my first job? I didn't go because I loved my boss. I went because I got a salary. So that's the external motivation. 
and in india we have had this culture of you know negative motivation like if you don't do something <laughs> right if you don't score you're going to fail if you don't go to office you're going to get fired like i hated that it doesn't work we have to live in positive motivation yeah what what do you want to do what are your goals and uh, i think that that that's the only way really you can't motivate motivation i think motive is i think a very internal thing yeah so it's difficult to kind of push that on to people so i don't think even have 1000 entrepreneurs 10000 entrepreneurs like mm-hmm. entrepreneurship is not something that i think can be forced upon people this is something that it's like it's whether you are or not you can become you know but i don't think it's something that people as institutions can say that like you produce engineers you produce entrepreneurs because the risk aspect is disproportionate actually not everyone can take the risk and you know, it's like what they say are you sicilian this is what's your take sir it's internal also definitely there is internal stimulus and there is external stimulus again it's a habit that you have to learn no how do you stay motivated because see an athlete for example an athlete who is preparing for a race or whatever it is it takes years and years before they actually compete and win number one a student also who is preparing say for some exams or whatever it is years of preparation a startup before they they, they go to pitch for investors or first customer it takes years so let think about that right? how do you stay the course stay motivated yeah, figure out things actually why we are building out bitphone is you know great point today you know when i build bitphone it's like any student entrepreneur hmm. today you know if i ask somebody if you were to start a company how much money would you have before you start by hmm. 10 lakhs you know maybe if you are lucky 25 lakhs i you go in what's your chance of success 1% now that's bad we, we look at that and that's something wrong there people should not be doing this so then now which phone we have not only to bring your team and your tools together but can we have actually mentors you know to come video and just connect and guide that entrepreneur all you have to do is just press play just press play with it become an entrepreneur may cost you 50000 bucks cost me it's way better than 5 lakhs 10 lakhs 25 1 crore like we have put in a crore over that in our business now if you ask me if i would spend 50000 rupees and say jagat you know you can move on the path well it's like blind decision right you just do it and it it actually is not too much money like 50k is nothing so we look at how much we will spend education four year degree then post grad this that i mean 50k is nothing a lakh is like good you know so can somebody spend a lakh 50k and really start their you know entrepreneurial career this i think is important like if we can this year after now i think the virtual office the whole remote entrepreneurship you know, we should do this and this is for india as well it's not only about us building out products and saying that hey you know we are equal to zoom or something it's not that the product experience is not that it's really about our context what can we do in our power to kind of make the world a better place so that's how i think it's going and uh, it's tough very very tough but yeah i think you guys are there we we're always pushing but i think that's the whole thesis right india needs like 100000 entrepreneurs now the moment we do that we become the global superpower and our power is english knowledge young people you know i i just read the average age of people in uh, meghalaya is 19 years old let's do that 19 is the average age in meghalaya today. and that's stunning like i just saw that statistic and i was like wow 19 can you imagine when i was 19 i was like crazy <laughs> so you know what would we unleash 19 years old knowledge preneurs in this country and it's not too much it's just taking together a few aspects and giving them like this hub to actually do business so i think it's a tough battle but yeah i think it's good good to do it somebody's got to do it right i mean that's what i think <laughs> somebody's got to do it we can't just let it to the agoras and the zooms of the world to dictate what to do so, as long as there is you know uh, enough motivation as you said that's of course yeah. Okay, I think you can give advice to people how do we motivate for ten years. Beyond that, it may be tough. You have to. It really depends on you know success, not success. These things matter because end of the day, you know, you have things to take care of as anybody else. But I think you have to be steadfast in your vision. This is what I tell Akira. So like, it's not about. It doesn't matter. You know, when we started the video chat app, Google Duo came in, WhatsApp video chat came, in, and then we did Meet, and then Microsoft and Google. So. I don't think there's any entrepreneur in India who's had that kind of competition. Like, that is like and and free. It's not even competition. It's like free. So then I said, okay, it's the worst 
that you can have and how do we grow from it? It's pretty straightforward. Akhil helps me a lot, motivated. But he has to like him working and it's very easy actually. So that, yeah, that's yeah. Good thing also. You love more views and thoughts there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and also, you know, I think the things that we are doing, right? See, why are we doing this, uh, the sessions, League of Extraordinary Startups, Startup Showcases, Startup Sundays with food shows, everything, right? We are also busy with so many things, right? Actually, you have two companies to run. You are an investor. You are advising so many people. I have to do what I have to do for a living and for the ecosystem community. But we stay, we stay the course, man. We do our best. <laughs> I think that's the main thing. Like, why I love, you know, and I'm so, like, happy and honored to have both of you, like, support us and... It's like uh, somebody's got to take the first step and you got to keep doing it. Like many people do it just for like some kind of incentive. Now, let's take incentive out of the game. Like, let's do it because we want to do something. That's it. And that, that's how sometimes I look at things like just like video. Uh, now people come and ask us like, Agora sucks. Like, what do we do? I don't know. Like, we've just been working on this stuff. And, <laughs> so it's sometimes things are obvious. Like people will flock and it's a question of time. It doesn't really matter. But because we enjoy doing what we do, I think it's important to do that. That, that is the key thing. Like, I, I think we learn it as long as it's like, it's like good. There's no difference between a live stream and, and a group conference. This is pretty much like a conference. And, you know, as long as we can learn from each other, I think that, that's, that's a good thing. As long as you enjoy what you do, I think that takes you. So your views, I, I want to be selfish here. Like, I just showed you some snapshots of how it looks. Happy to kind of show you a live uh, this thing also. But, you know, for remote sales, what I've been working on, as you know, you know, we've raised our first round of funding. Everything was remote, right? I never met anyone. In fact, out of 10, 12 invest, 10 investors, we just met, uh, you know, two of them. Everybody else, we just met straight on Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, very crude technology. I was like, fingers crossed. Like, you know, they can actually log in. So that happened. All of us outreach, right? So if you see now with the INQ initiatives with the startup thing, uh, die thing. You see, like the leads are clearly populating. You see who all, and, and these are very qualified entrepreneurs. Generally, guys who are interested. So that's kind of how we're going. Your views? I mean, what's next? How do we kind of? Uh, what do you think as as you know as executive director of Thai, as as global data INQ plus CTO Joroa? Mm -hmm. What are your challenges? How can we help you? And that that's like to me the most important. Um. So. I think we have talked about this before also, and I, I, I definitely like the concept, and then that's why I, you know, reached out to a few people and then suggested that you know the virtual office space is something that we should look at. And then the last week, you when when we had the live demo, and we showed it, and I think uh, it, it's a it's a platform. But uh, <clears throat> there are two aspects to it. One is uh, what you have right now is great; right? Uh, it's something that uh, you know we'd like to see, but. Uh, it's, it's still in its infancy, and then when people start using it, you'll start to see more, uh, you know, how to, you know, carve it out in a way that it's, it works best for everyone. Right? Uh, so that's just my two cents on it, uh, in terms of, like, uh, how it is. But, uh, uh, I mean, from, from my business perspective, unfortunately, the way we are in, uh, we have to go and meet clients, right, uh, because we have to go into a physical demo and then, you know, but, uh, and I've always said that the best way to get a customer on board is to go and plug your product into their existing you know, infrastructure and show them that it works, right? Um, so that's why... I think why, physical, yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, and, and that's the suggestion I'd give to you also. You know, somebody like... And, and you are right on that track, right? I mean, somebody who's trying to send you a Zoom invite or something, you just send them your link and say that this is how easy it is. It's good and bad sometimes. Like they judge us just that we are a, a conferencing platform. They don't see virtual office and all that stuff. Yeah. So it's yeah. good and bad. But then, yeah, but then Jagat, you have to solve that problem. It's your problem to solve. Yeah. Oh yes, I created the problem and I'll solve it. Yeah, yeah, you have to solve the problem. Also, see, we want you no know, from the community ecosystem uh, activities that look, we care about trying to do what we want to do. Yeah. What we can do, bring in more founders. For example, you know, Ashutosh also connected me to Novel. I said hi to him spoke to him and tomorrow i'll see what else i can do for him and know whatever it is correct mm -hmm. so we have to build that community but yeah how do we motivate people to make those introductions make those connections Good. sonia has mentioned something there motivation comes from your passion purpose and the people around you yeah. interesting yes yeah that's good that's all good. Yeah. but then we got to do we got to do we got to figure out how to 
build those ecosystems and those networks innovation clusters mm -hmm. so why should someone from a very top end corporate want to volunteer their time on a weekend when they can just relax chill spend time with family how can we make a founder who's anyway struggling and you know has lots of uh, uh, guns pointing at his or her head take some time out to volunteer and you know do some outreach etc etc so so we had to figure out those motivation tools what are the triggers what's in it for you what's in it for them the perennial human uh, psychology key and uh, you know behavioral uh, thoughts also right because i mean one of the things that i've been also doing is i've been reading about behaviors like why do cus cus consumer or customers behave the way they behave right because that's how you can grow your company because if you don't know what they going what's going to trigger their motivation mm -hmm. and what's go going to make them to do something that is favorable for you mm -hmm. it's very difficult to scale and and innovation can only work well when it's scaling because that's yes. when it monetizes or is it just innovation or invention or whatever it is right so there are many challenges i think that founders have to kind of understand and they have to come together that's the only thought process and prayer that i have one one does what one does i do i will do continue doing whatever i have to do and do it maybe to the 10x level and leveraging technology tools also ashutosh jagat right you will understand the uh, digital tools what are the platforms that is available because see whatever you say google or microsoft we must recommend and appreciate the kind of platforms they build you know the google tensorflow google developer community aws also does a lot Uh, microsoft has their azure cloud thing now gojek is doing this and uh, so many people are building communities and it yes it does lead to sale i mean there it's very clear it leads to sale so whether it is you know jagat what can you what else can you do i know you're doing a lot but uh, are there any thought processes that you have anything that you want from the other startup founders who are around i think other startup founders all of them have their hands full all of them should look at how they can grow. our goal also is to help them grow all of Luckily, you know, we've survived and we're good. But I think what's most important for the whole ecosystem and you know the whole Indian ecosystem, we have to respect you know the the fact that technology costs money. I think everyone will understand that. Like Ashutosh, I'm sure also selling Indian customers. We have to respect the fact that technology costs money. Uh, and you know, the moment you start doing that, you start seeing five, ten x growth very, very easy. But till you do that, there is no reason for you to actually grow. This is what I told a couple of people who came in. uh their deal is very simple right uh, hey you know we tried out like you know xyz big guys and uh, it doesn't work for us uh, we believe that you can make it work for us but hey you know we don't have money so i'm like okay uh, you know what i got bills to pay so what do you want me to do right i can solve your problem like overnight like all your problems are already solved like you can check it out but you know if you come in with this kind of thesis like what do we do we're not an ngo right so unless you actually respect the fact that see we're going to grow your business 5x if your people can start interacting and you know having communication your your value is going to go up big time now if you are telling me and i'm just a founder like you we got no money you know we're just like you guys we're bootstrapped and working hard now you come in and say hey you know the, the largest public companies in the world we can't you know they can't solve our problem but you solve our problem but we can't pay you anything now i think like hey you know you seriously have to be blessed Right. right. Other, why would you get this? Right. Yeah, yeah. It it's tough? it's a very tough one, no? I mean, there is so. For example, any that, any yeah, any market is so big. Like you know, the automobile market, two wheeler market, the mobile phone market. Everyone. So this is a message to Indian founders. This is what I found actually. Like as as you know, we invest a lot into our business. We don't think twice about what we spend because yeah. these are investments. One thing right. I've seen the Indian founders, as opposed to you know founders outside, is that. We're very penny wise, pound foolish, right? We don't know what to spend on, like. But we, we but we know. love, but we love all the founders, Jagat. It's okay. No, I'm saying. <laughs> so anyway, now guys, I just yeah, realized it is six o five. Six o five. Any other yeah. productivity tools, growth hacks, books that you want to talk about, guys? I, I just uh, started one more book. Uh, uh, huh. I, I simply forgot how to. You know, I don't have it. It's called uh, Nudge. It's from Richard Taylor, Professor Richard Taylor. He, he won the Behavioral Economics uh, Nobel Prize yeah. uh, a couple of years ago. It's a fantastic book, and not just this book. You know, if you read uh, his book and Paul Krugman's other books, so you know which are all on the same topic, right? Uh, you're misbehaving. Asking, They have a book called Misbehaving also. Misbehaving. I've got that book. I've got that book. Yeah. I read it. And, so good and, one. Yeah, and and the beauty of you know these books is that every time you read, and then you, let's say you interact with the customer, and then you come back. 
10% of what they talked about it it just helps a lot it comes back mm-hmm. so uh, uh, i'll give a very simple example we did a demo recently for a customer and when we made the screens for that uh, instead of our logo in our screens we had their ui you know logo and everything so it kind of felt like they already had the product and uh, they just loved it right uh, it was a very small gesture right you know we never thought that it would make a difference but it did right so they they were envisioning that and then you know they used those screenshots to talk to their uh, higher ups and then you know, we, we we did get to that deal right so will it work at every place i don't think so right but it did work there you know we we understood the psychology behind it and then you know it did work right? so so uh, very important point I want to mention ZTD as well. I think that's a yeah, great ZTD. point. I should have said. I also do that a lot. I kind of customize the template just to look like their own pitch. Because mm-hmm. I think if I was receiving that, you know, how would I look at the business? Mm-hmm. Would it make sense to my context, my app? Mm-hmm. So I think that's a really valuable thing to do. Instead of putting our logos and saying the template, put in their stuff, put in their colors. Of course, you said representative only, and you mentioned something there. So it's they don't hold us tomorrow. I have had that issue. They say, hey, Jagad, the proposal is a little different from the app. I said, hey. You know, <laughs> that's because you guys give some feedback yeah but, yeah and, and one final thing you know um, we always talk about we talk about like growth and growth hacks and stuff like that but one growth hack is uh, you know every startup entrepreneur should also read about how vcs work uh, it's it's as important as you know going to a vc for money because uh, you understand their angle right? so and with it you know when we did the session you did the session last week with someone like right so he put this like 27 pitch you know like things that you should not talk to vcs and then we did it with vinod and vinod talked about the same thing like how that journey works so it's very important to not just you know know about technology know about product know about all these things leadership and all that right? you also need to understand how vcs work right? like how how vcs invest what type of you know, you know investments you do. because then when you are going to the vc with your own research you know what not to talk about and you know what to talk about. so so that's one area that nobody talks about right? how do you make sure that you know how this is so just just want to say it's a great point i think it also comes in with the uh, the role of a ceo right like when you think of startup ceo typically we are thinking product and marketing and sales but like actually it's like you know the ceo is like nominated by the board is there to deliver shareholder return like when you think in that term automatically i think you realize that your job is to deliver return to shareholders that's first and product and market and team and everything is like my product of that so i think that's an understanding of ceo versus founder i think is like critical when you're ceo you have to answer to the board you have to deliver return so the moment you take money you have to define in your head what's their exit when's their exit 5x 10x whatever it might be depending on the kind of stage uh, but i think it's valuable yeah for before raising money it's not someone who put money right They're putting money for something, and you have to be aligned with that. Yeah. If you're not aligned, then it's not no point. It's not respectful. Yeah. True. Absolutely. Super cheap. Yeah. Done, guys. So I think it's been an. I just got. I got. A, I got a nice suggestion for next week if everyone's game. Mm-hmm. We'll all work through this week, and let's see if we can pick up three or four startups. Just to brainstorm, start their own startup story. What is their story? how does you know if we can add in 2 3 minutes of value could it kind of help them if that's okay we can connect offline on the whatsapp group we can find you, you know. so we think, have two two other founders here in the group you know yeah, yeah. Uh, i think sonia I, i told sonia to get on the video chat she was supposed to join us on startup saturday startup oh, saturday yeah. sonia if you there and also we have this women entrepreneur uh, focus Can also we, well? we can try that ha huh, jagat Yeah, you can also try women entrepreneur and also like any emerging tech, right? So we have blockchain, but can we do something? You know, get some subject matter experts to work with us on, say, AR, VR. We can do something around, uh, you know, like the the new banking also. FinTech has grown like there's no tomorrow. So I mean, of course, it's huge space. Right? There is lending space. There is the wallets. There is new banking. There is student loans. Except like Leverage Edu has raised almost hundred crores, uh, like you know, in for four years time. And in the EV industry also is becoming very big. Okay, no, but like, I think startup yeah. only we can just like look at the stories. That's yeah, like yeah. Yeah, yeah. We can have, we can have. Yeah. 
so because we are also doing a time where we are doing some things around investors and startups coming together so we are doing something on women entrepreneurs on uh, it it morning 11:30 to 12:30 jagat yeah. and uh, we are also trying to figure out uh, see look it's not about bangalore i mean it can be from anywhere we've had people from nagpur and sri lanka and uh, maybe we can talk to some uh, our friends in other ecosystems kerala we have got some wonderful people who came huh so lot of people from europe and us who have added me on linkedin so i yeah. will reach out to them yeah, yeah let's ask them let's ask them no yeah, please let's let's, let's definitely ask them if they are interested in uh, coming on board and working with us and you know help them to create see why not see there could be also jagat there could be potential uh, bridges to be built they could use with phone They, and the only way that uh, the only way that they can understand what how good or bad bit phone is for their purpose is by coming and you know doing a session and understanding it's all about right so you have to kind of figure that part also out. so if you're saying that uh, uh, indian founders and uh, jagat indian founders are not paying rupees then you find foreign founders will pay dollars and euros for you okay yeah, our indian founders are very special and and i always said like we always work with indian founders you know that like whoever it is we always work with them all i said is like you know it should be a mutual you know, <laughs> yeah. understand we want you to grow we want us to grow so we are not saying we are not a chart and and what i always do in all my deals we offer like what we call the best market price we say if you can find a better price than us we give you that price like it's very standard terms we have our pricing and and beyond that if you find any price that's lower than ours you you tell us and we'd bill you at that price so yeah. i think it's a fair deal like we should just put up <laughs> great guys so it's 6:15 almost uh, thank you so much and jagat we'll of course uh, work out what we're going to do for tomorrow evening and uh, will be great to have the audience back i just hope that you'll have remember remember this is also available on youtube facebook and on of course on bitphone because a lot of resources about the books and hacks and tools and uh, you know please use it well because uh, getting work done with small teams is something that is very critical very important and very necessary so further uh, information will be of course shared on the various whatsapp groups and our uh, various uh, uh, social media channels any parting thoughts and summary from jagat and uh, ashutosh and then we can close up uh, yeah i mean uh, first of all you know that i have always enjoyed this time you know the, uh, it it's it's in two ways very important one is uh, it you know helps me say whatever i like to say in terms of you know <clears throat> whatever knowledge i can depart, uh, impart and be to share that and then the second part of it is uh, it's always good to have the questions right so it's a, it's a, it's a validation it's also you know uh, you feel that you know that it, it's going somewhere so i'm always happy to be here and uh, you know we did you know we spoke about it yesterday also this was a tough week but uh, wanted to make this time wanted to be here and, I'm happy for everyone who joins you all this uh, thank you all and uh, thank you again vidita for hosting this uh, fantastic session and with each other you know good, good platform Brilliant. yes yes let's continue and uh, let's keep growing let's keep doing our best for whatever we can for the ecosystem uh, gentlemen and uh, take care enjoy your saturday evening and i'm sure we're going to be logging in and doing many more such uh, interesting sessions for the community and for ourselves also okay yes, yes. primary motivation factor is also for ourselves we should most be we need to most of us we have to do these things for the community charity starts with the home we should yes. be happy and then ah. okay <laughs> done deal thanks so much thank you everyone thank you yes bye 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 bye